Welcome to Lesson 4 of my Visual C Sharp Language Series. In this video, we are going to be covering variables and calculations. Okay, so let's get started by uh, clicking New Project, Windows Forms Application, and we are going to call this Lesson 04. Okay. And then uh, let's get started by uh, pinning open our toolbox and dragging an A button and our text box. Uh, basically the same controls as in the next, I mean in the last, I'm sorry, uh, tutorial. Actually, uh, I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to put in another uh, text box so that we can use it in our variables and calculations. So. As I said in the introduction, um, we're, in this tutorial we are going to be discussing uh, variables and how to use and calculate them. So, um, in the lowest of the low um, definition, a variable is a place in memory where uh, the computer stores information. Now, um, if we want to put this in like a more realistic scenario. Um, a variable, uh, for example, is like a drawer. And you put data or stuff inside this drawer. But um, these drawers or variables, they can vary in size. Some can be small and some can be big. And some can be purposed for different types of things. Like variables differ. Some can be uh, characters, some can be strings, and some can be numbers, and some can be like which are called booleans, which are either of zero or one, or true or false. So let's get started. I'm going to start this uh, using the event handler. We are going to be declaring these uh, variables. So um, let's get started by uh, declaring and using strings. Now in the past uh, videos we have been using strings quite a lot so this shouldn't be new but um, in this video I'm going to be declaring them instead of just suddenly using them. So in C sharp you um, say the type of the variable then you type the name of the variable and that is how you declare a variable you just use string or the, the variable type and then the variable name but in normal cases well in many cases we are not going to do that this is just a standard way of declaring it instead we are immediately after declaring it we are going to say equals something in this case we are going to set it equal to test. So we declare a string, call it test string, and we call it test. And this little green thing squiggly appeared as a warning when we first just put te string test string that the, the variable wasn't assigned to anything, but now we assigned it to it. And if we compile our application, you will see that uh, nothing has happened. Well, the variable has been declared, and we can prove that if we go through debugging the application, which I do not want to do in uh, this tutorial. So now that we've declared the string, uh, let's use it. And now uh, some of you uh, C++ or assembly programmers in particular are going to be like uh, staring and may maybe in slight confusion on how I could declare a string um, like that. Well, for you guys who do not know, strings are stored in memory in a weird way. That every single character allocates a little block of memory. And to declare a string in, say, a binary or assembly, in any low level programming language, uh, you have to declare it using an array, uh, which I'm do not think I'll discuss arrays in this tutorial. I may discuss them a little later though. 
But um, the .NET Framework provides a class which allows us to use string as its own variable. In the .NET Framework in Visual Studio, under all the kinks in the works, it actually provides an array in its memory. So we do not have to worry about doing anything crazy. Again, if you're new to programming in general, you don't have to worry about this at all. So let's go ahead, go back to our design form, go back here, text box one. We are going to allocate um, this variable and we're going to put it into the text box. So similarly to what we did in the last video tutorial, we're going to do uh, text box one dot text equals and now instead of putting in strings and doing putting in a value we are going to assign this to the variable and you do not need quotations you only need quotations for the using of a string but for variables you just say the name <coughs> I'm sorry so here we go text box one dot text equals test string and as you see, it's appearing in red right here, so we may have an error. So I'm going to uh, debug this, and you see there are build errors. Uh, now, we're going to look at does not exist in the current content. Uh, whoops, it looks like I have a naming error. Whoops, I am so sorry, guys. Um, text string. And there we go, that should do the trick. And uh, as you see here, this is an example of common of programming errors and mistakes and how a Visual Studio helps you to debug these mistakes. So let's go ahead and compile again. We press the button and as you see it says test. Okay so that is it we have declared and used the string type. So now let's get into numbers. The numbers are a slight a uh, little more complicated. There are many 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 variables for many types of numbers. Now we are only going to discuss two of them, which I believe is the easiest way to use them. We're going to discuss the integer, a variable type. We are also going to use the double variable type. The others, which there's tons of them, floats in 16, in 32, there are tons of other different um, numerical variables we're not going to use because we don't want to get too complex into it. So just for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to use two types of numbers, which are int, integer, and double. Now, uh, there are a few reasons why. Let me just declare some of these. int, in, integer variable. Whoops, I'm sorry. I'm going to put that. And double, double variable. And we're not going to uh, instantiate it to anything. So, int um, and double, they have their differences. Um, for those, you know, who have gone through calculus or actually even just algebra should know uh, what an int is. And we, we can uh, kind of as a, compare it to int as just an integer and double as, say, rational numbers, actually, more, more or less. You can consider them rational numbers, but in a way that integers, um, you, you know, they go from zero up to, a, up to infinity, zero down the negatives to infinity, but they're, they're, they're just numbers. There are no fractions, there are no decimal places, there's no anything like that. And doubles, on the other hand, they go a lot farther and they can have um, decimals. And also, yeah, integers can only store uh, a value of up to, I believe it's, it's in the millions and billions. I, I am not sure. I'd actually have to look that up. And doubles, can, their variables can be even bigger, going up to say the trillions and higher, up and down. So you can just uh, declare them here. I'm just going to say ints for small variables, double are for big variables. And that's just how I'm going to put it. So now, as you see, I have two text boxes here. We're going to create a calculator. So why don't I just now organize this very so slightly. Here's our button. Okay. So let's get started with creating a calculator. It's going to just be a simple uh, add function calculator. 
So let's uh, get rid of our lines of thread here. And we are going to create a pair of doubles. This is one way to declare them. You can also declare them using a comma. You can declare uh, two of them at once. That's another way to declare them. And I'm going to say first number equals text box one dot text. Now you're going to see an error pop up. A big uh, red line. And I knew this was going to happen and this is of uh, the difference is that it clearly defines a strongly typed language and a weak language like um, basic. Um, text, as you already know, is a string type. We're trying to convert a string type to a numerical type, and that's going to give you an error. Basic and F sharp, they won't give you errors, but this uh, will give you an error. So we're going to have to convert this. And to, com to uh, convert this, we're going to use um, double dot parse and we're going to put this in there so that will convert this if possible to convert this into a double and then we're going to do the same for the second number Okay. And now we are going to add these values and display them into a text box. So, I mean a message box. We're going to do the message box. We're going to make this object show itself. And instead of putting our um, quotations, we are going to in first number, the plus sign. And second number. And as you see, we got um, more errors. And that is because message box, um, when it shows, it shows a string. So we're going to have to uh, convert this to string. Now parse, um, there's no feature to convert that, but there's a there's a different way how to do it here. We just put put all your ending value in parenthesis, you know, order of operations, and then we have our dot and we have two string. That will convert all this to a string. So let's get started with popular numbers here. Five, six, next box pops up, it says eleven. Let's try five point five, six point five, and we get twelve. Now, let's try something weird. We're going to put like A and Arnie in here. We're going to try and add this up and see what happens here. We're going to press our button. And in a moment, um, yep, there we go. It should give me an exception or an error or a, basically a crash. Something went wrong. The code couldn't do anything about it. And it crashed because we tried to uh, what's called truncate a string to a number and that was impossible so the application failed and in a future video I'm going to show you how to do exception handling and how to prevent this from happening so uh, just so you know what will happen if you do something that's incredibly stupid and you uh, make this possible okay so that is it for uh, this tutorial on variables and calculations and for more tutorials, please go to thehackerjournal.com.